Su Majestad. A continuación, dará comienzo la ceremonia de entrega de las medallas de honor Ruth Bader Ginsburg en presencia de Su Majestad el Rey, en reconocimiento a extraordinarias mujeres que han destacado por su labor como defensoras y promotoras del Estado de Derecho, como garantía de la paz y de la libertad. En estos instantes se proyectará el vídeo de la World Jurist Association. Adelante. Peace through law. During the Cold War years, faced with the threat of a nuclear holocaust, a few good men set in motion a singular initiative in favor of peace. It was July 1957 when, on the occasion of a gala hosted in London in honor of the American Bar Association, its president, Charles Rhine, the Chief Justice of the United States, Earl Warren, and Sir Winston Churchill agreed to create a program to promote world peace through law the rule of law against the use of force. It's at that moment they decided to launch what would later be called the World Jurist Association. Years later, in 1963, Charles Rhine and Earl Warren, in their tireless struggle for human rights, inaugurated in Greece the first World Congress of Law. Numerous presidents of supreme and constitutional courts from different countries throughout the world, general attorneys, egregious lawyers and eminent professors a group of more than 3,000 jurists centered around a single purpose defined by President Kennedy in his message to the Assembly. It gives me great pleasure to send greetings to the First World Conference on World Peace through the Rule of Law. This conference represents five years of effort and brings together lawyers and judges from overseas from a hundred countries in the attempt to develop and strengthen the legal machinery that must form the basis for peaceful relations among all nations. Two years later, Lyndon B. Johnson inaugurated the Second World Congress in Washington, whose organizing committee was chaired by Presidents Truman and Eisenhower. Twenty-five more assemblies of this kind, organized by the World Jurist Association, have taken place since then in various countries worldwide. Thousands of men and women united in this formidable association to promote peace through law throughout the world. Three world statesmen were also honored years ago with the World Peace and Liberty Award. Sir Winston Churchill, René Cassin, father of the UN Declaration of Human Rights, and Nelson Mandela. In Madrid, within the framework of the 26th World Law Congress, the largest association of jurists in the world, King Felipe VI of Spain is awarded the World Peace and Liberty Award for his defense of democratic and constitutional values that has presided over the 40 years of greater freedom and prosperity throughout the history of his country. The gesture represents an explicit recognition of the democratic institutions of his country for their commitment to the rule of law and the separation of powers. In short, with freedom and justice. In February 2020, the World Jurist Association and the World Law Foundation, chaired by Javier Cremades, present the World Peace and Liberty Award to US Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, recognizing her laudable advocacy of gender equality and civil rights throughout her professional life, as well as having founded the Women's Rights Section within the American Civil Liberties Union. Justice Ginsburg has been a visionary and strategic leader in ensuring that equality, equity, and the rule of law do not remain in a theoretical realm, but that they positively impact social institutions and people's lives. Receiving the World Peace and From the World, World, Jurist, World, Association World Jurist Association and World and Law Foundation, Foundation, the Supreme Court Justice says the biggest the challenge facing the rule of law today is the A continuación tiene la palabra don Javier Cremades, presidente de la World Law Foundation. Majestad, presidentes de tribunales constitucionales y de tribunales supremos de distintos países del mundo, ministros, Embajadores, autoridades, premiadas, alcalde, señoras y señores. Presidenta del Consejo de Estado. Hoy, presidenta del Senado, Madrid y España se visten de gala 
para rendir un homenaje a grandes mujeres juristas, baluartes y defensoras del Estado de Derecho. La World Juris Association organiza, por cuarta vez en sus 60 años de historia, un evento magno en nuestro país para seguir proclamando la necesidad de promover el gobierno de las leyes, el Estado de Derecho, como base y fundamento de nuestra vida en libertad. En 1979 se celebró en Madrid, por primera vez, el Congreso Mundial del Derecho. Con un formato de la época y con más de 2.000 representantes de todo el mundo jurídico venidos de más de 60 países, Su Majestad el Rey Don Juan Carlos pudo presentar la nueva España constitucional a la comunidad jurídica internacional. Quince años después, en 1994, volvió a celebrarse el World of Congress en Barcelona. Pero fue en 2019, hace apenas un par de años, hace algo más ya de dos años, cuando en el Teatro Real de Madrid, ante 2.300 testigos llegados de todos los rincones del globo, la World Jurist Association se vinculó más íntimamente a nuestra nación. En una ceremonia que todos recordamos con emoción, señor, la Asociación Mundial de Juristas quiso otorgar su máximo galardón, el World Peace and Liberty Award, a Su Majestad Don Felipe VI. Él representaba, como primera institución del Estado, la eficaz defensa de la convivencia democrática y la libertad, del Estado de Derecho y el orden constitucional, en suma de nuestra Constitución. La comunidad jurídica internacional reconocía así Felipe VI, a Felipe VI, un estadista joven y maduro a la vez, con otros galardonados y los conectaba con ellos, personajes históricos como Winston Churchill, que lideró la resistencia del mundo libre, René Cassin, que asumió la histórica tarea de redactar la Declaración Universal de Derechos Humanos, y Nelson Mandela, cuyo liderazgo moral global fue decisivo para superar de forma pacífica la tragedia histórica de la apartheid. Su Majestad el Rey encarnó en horas decisivas el valor de las instituciones para defender el marco de convivencia en una sociedad plural. Su liderazgo y el normal funcionamiento de la Administración de Justicia demostraron las sólidas raíces del Estado de Derecho en España. Gracias a ellos, se puso de manifiesto que nadie puede situarse por encima de la ley, auténtica y única garante de la libertad y de la convivencia pacífica. Apenas 12 meses después, como hemos visto en el vídeo, la World Juris Association volvió a reconocer el trabajo de una persona con impacto global a favor de la causa de la paz y la libertad a través del derecho. En esta ocasión fue Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We all at the board of the World Juris Association were extremely pleased and honored to deliver the World Peace and Liberty Award to Ruth Bader Ginsburg at the premises of the influential, iconic, American Bar Association, the largest voluntary professional association in the world. Thanks, Patricia Lee Riffel, for being hosting us in Washington, and thank to be here today. Now the World Juris Association is hosting you in Madrid. At that moment, RGB was the first woman to join this small group of giants with magnificent achievements and significant contributions to civilization, promoting peace and liberty through law. Justice Ginsburg was and is today an inspiration for many women in the world and for many generations to come. Este es precisamente el propósito de las medallas que ahora vamos a entregar, mantener el legado de Ruth Bader Ginsburg, por mover los valores que ella inspiró y, particularmente, su dedicación eficaz e infatigable, inteligente y comprometida hasta la entrega total a favor del imperio de la ley. En el mundo hay y habrá también otras Ruth Bader Ginsburg, mujeres que han sido decisivas para que toda la sociedad encuentre cobijo bajo el imperio de la ley. Es el caso de todas las premiadas Quiero agradecer a James Ginsburg que haya presidido el jurado, el trabajo y el tiempo que ha dedicado, y también al resto de sus integrantes, Vivian Redding, Encarnación Roca, Amanda Tyler, Alby Sachs, 
José Ramos Horta y Elizabeth McGill. Gracias a todas las premiadas por una vida de entrega al derecho y, por tanto, de entrega a los demás, a la causa última de proteger la libertad y la dignidad de todos. Y como esta mañana nos decía la presidenta de la American Bar Association, para que puedan cada uno perseguir sus sueños y su felicidad. A Christine Lagarde, de Francia, Gillian Triggs, de Australia, Maite Oronoz, de Estados Unidos, Lucy Báñez, de Perú, Jan Hai Kim, de Corea, y final y felizmente a la española Rosario Silva, que recibirán a continuación sus medallas. Dos galardonadas más, Navi Pillai, de Sudáfrica, y Sujata Mahonar, de la India, de la India recogerán la distinción durante el próximo World of Congress de la World Juris Association en Colombia. Ambas, sin embargo, nos han enviado un mensaje que escucharemos a continuación. A todas estas increíbles mujeres, mi gratitud y mi más cordial enhorabuena en nombre de la World Juris Association y en el mío propio. Finalmente, quiero dar las gracias a Su Majestad el Rey Felipe VI por presidir este acto Felipe VI es el único titular hoy presente de World Peace and Liberty Award. Él es, para muchas personas en el mundo, al igual que las premiadas, un ejemplo de una vida dedicada al servicio de la Constitución, del Estado de Derecho y defensor del Gobierno de las leyes. Estamos muy felices de que sea él antecesor, pero también de alguna manera sucesor de Ruth Bader Ginsburg, quien entregue estas primeras medallas que llevan su nombre. Gracias. Majestad, por honrarnos con su presencia y por su permanente apoyo a la causa de la democracia basada en el imperio de la ley. Muchas gracias. El jurado de las medallas Ruth Bader Ginsburg está integrado por juristas de distintos continentes y con historias muy diferentes quienes han destacado por su defensa de la paz y la libertad a través del derecho. El tribunal está presidido por la hija de Justice Ginsburg, Jane Ginsburg, y catedrática de Derecho de la Universidad de Columbia, y cuenta entre sus miembros con José Ramos Horta, Premio Nobel de la Paz y expresidente de Timor Oriental, Encarnación Roca, vicepresidenta del Tribunal Constitucional de España, Vivian Redding, comisaria y vicepresidenta de la Comisión Europea entre 2010 y 2014, Albi Sachs, juez del Tribunal Constitucional de Sudáfrica. Amanda Tyler, catedrática de Berkeley y law clerk de la jueza Ginsburg. Elizabeth McGill, catedrática de Stanford y law clerk de la jueza Ginsburg. Victoria Ortega, presidenta del Consejo General de la Abogacía Española. Y Javier Cremades, presidente de la World Jurist Association. And the first awarded woman with the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medal of Honor is Navi Pillai. Navi Pillai is a South African jurist who had the privilege to serve as the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights from 2008 to 2014. Mrs. Pillai has ruled many human rights issues, having grown up under the apartheid regime in South Africa. She has the honor to be the first non-white woman judge of the High Court of South Africa, nominated by Nelson Mandela. She has also served as a judge of the International Criminal Court and she was president of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. In April 2015, Pillai became the 26th commissioner of the International Commission Against the Death Penalty. She's also one of the 25 leader figures on the Information and Democratic Commission. Her fight for human rights has been the essence of her entire life. Vamos a enseñar un video. His Majesty King Philip VI of Spain, President of the World Jurist Association, Mr. Javier Cremades, Jane Ginsburg, and distinguished jurists from across the world, I greet you warmly from my hometown, Durban, South Africa. My name is Navi Pillay. I welcome the Madrid Summit and regret that I'm not able to attend this important legal event because of COVID-19 restrictions. I wish to thank the World Jurist Association for this meeting and particularly for this international tribute to Justice Ruth Ginsburg, one of the most inspiring women that the legal community has to offer to the world. I was privileged to have met her 
and to salute her for her progressive jurisprudence. I'm deeply honored to receive the Ruth Ginsburg Medal of Honor and to have this connection with her legacy together with the rest of the extraordinary women who have been selected for this distinguished award. I wish to thank the only awardee alive of the World Peace and Liberty Award, His Majesty King Philippe VI, for his disposition to present the awards to the recipients. I had the privilege of an audience with His Majesty when I was United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights and later as president of the International Commission Against the Death Penalty. King Philippe is indeed a champion of human rights and human life. In conclusion, let me express my appreciation for the World Jurist Association and its leadership in advancing a world ruled by law and not by force as the only guarantor for peace and freedom. Thank you. The second awarded woman with the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medal of Honor is Sujata Manohar. Sujata is a retired judge of the Supreme Court of India and a former member of the National Human Rights Commission of India. As a judge, she adopted a strong independent stance upholding the rule of law in the face of political and public pressure. After her retirement, she was appointed a member of the National Human Rights Commission. She is an honorary fellow of Lady Margaret Hall in Oxford University and an honorary fellow in Lincoln's Inn in London. We have to mention her contribution in the field of human rights, specifically in women and children's rights. Your Majesty, Mr. Cremadis, President of the World Jurist Association, Professor Jane Ginsburg, distinguished members of the international jury and distinguished judges and jurists from all over the world who are present here today. I feel greatly honored by being given this medal of honor in the memory of a great woman judge, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I would like to thank the World Jurist Association, the International Jury, and all organizations associated with this function for giving me this prestigious award. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a strong proponent of gender equality. When asked how it felt to be the second woman judge on the US Supreme Court, she replied, it feels good, but it will feel much better when people stop counting. As the second woman judge on the Indian Supreme Court, I was delighted by her comment. Equality, particularly equality on the ground of sex and all the types of non-discrimination are all part of the basic human rights under the Indian Constitution and these basic rights are justiciable and enforceable. As a judge, I have tried my best to uphold these basic human rights. I am very happy that the Vishakha judgment to which I was a party has now become law. As a member of the Human Rights Commission, I have also had the privilege of addressing judges of, the, of various countries on enforcement of human rights through domestic courts under the auspices of the United Nations Division for Advancement of Women. As a judge, and I was a judge of the Bombay High Court, the Chief Justice of the Bombay High Court and Kerala High Courts and Judge of the Supreme Court, I found that there is one very happy outcome of being a judge in the sense that you can function on the footing of complete equality with your men colleagues. 
and uh, your judgments are there for all to see. Before I end, I would like to express my gratitude to my parents who gave their children the best education and professional training without any gender discrimination. And to my husband who supported and encouraged me in difficult times at the start of my career as a lawyer. Once again, I thank you for this exceptional honor. I'm sorry I'm not able to come personally to receive it because of travel restrictions on account of the pandemic, but I will always cherish this really special honor. Thank you very much. Ahora vamos a continuar anunciando a las galardonadas que sí han podido acompañarnos en el día de hoy. The third Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medal of Honor goes to Maite Oronoz. Es un enorme placer presentarles a Maite Oronoz, quien fuera la primera mujer jueza más joven en presidir el Tribunal Supremo de Puerto Rico. Es comisionada de la Comisión Permanente de Género y de Acceso a la Justicia de la Cumbre Judicial Iberoamericana y miembro del Court Management and Public Engagement Trust and Confidence del Chief Justice. Durante los últimos cinco años que ha ejercido como jueza presidenta, ha modernizado el sistema judicial de Puerto Rico al implementar iniciativas tecnológicas como la presentación electrónica de todos los casos civiles a nivel de instancia. También ha enfocado sus esfuerzos en atender la equidad de género y la erradicación de la violencia de género a través de la expansión de las salas especializadas e iniciativas educativas. Es destacable su valentía y perseverancia por la defensa de los derechos de los colectivos más vulnerables y por promover la igualdad de género. La cuarta medalla, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, se entrega a Rosario Silva de la Puerta. Tengo el enorme privilegio de presentarles a Rosario Silva de la Puerta, extraordinaria jurista española, vicepresidenta del Tribunal de Justicia de la Unión Europea. Con solo 24 años, poco después de terminar la carrera de Derecho en la Universidad Complutense, se convirtió en la abogada del Estado. Ha sido una ardua defensora de los tribunales europeos frente a la tentación de algunos países de hacer sus propias interpretaciones de las leyes comunitarias. El pasado 15 de diciembre, el ministro de Justicia, Juan Carlos Campo, acordó conceder a Silva la Puerta la Gran Cruz de la Orden de San Raimundo de Peñafort, la más importante distinción que concede el ministerio en reconocimiento a sus más que merecidos méritos. The Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medals of Honor, Toulouse del Carmen Ibáñez Carranza. Tengo el inmenso privilegio de presentarles a Luz del Carmen Ibáñez Carranza abogada peruana que actualmente es juez de la Corte Penal Internacional. Fue fiscal nacional superior de Sistema Especializado del Perú para la persecución de delitos como el terrorismo, graves violaciones de los derechos humanos y los crímenes contra la humanidad. Durante su carrera fue nombrada varias veces como delegada peruana ante la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos. Ha dedicado su vida a luchar por perseverar el honor de las víctimas por muertes violentas, teniendo especial atención al consuelo de sus familiares. The Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medals of Honor to Gillian Triggs. It is a great privilege to present you Gillian Triggs, an Australian academic specializing in public international law, who is currently Assistant Secretary General, Assistant High Commissioner for Protection at the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. This brilliant and talented woman, who has served as president of the Australian Human Rights Commission, brings to the position several decades of professional experience as an academic, practicing lawyer, advocate, and public policy expert. A barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Victoria, she is currently vice chancellor fellow at the University of Melbourne, president of the ASEAN Development Bank Administrative Tribunal, and holder of a number of other eminent appointments. The Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medal of Honor to Yang Ki Him. I have the great pleasure to present you Judge Kim, who has served more than 25 years as a senior judge in different courts, as well as a standing commissioner of the National Human Rights Commission of Korea. In the global field, she has contributed immensely to promoting human rights by serving in several intergovernmental legal organizations 
inter alia as vice president of the International Association of Women Judges, after having successfully served as Asia Pacific Regional Director of that organization. She also has dedicated her life as torture prevention ambassador of the Asia Pacific Forum of National Institutions. The Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medals of Honor to Christine Lagarde. I have the great honor to present you Christine Lagarde, President of the European Central Bank, who has the first woman to chair the International Monetary Fund. She's a French politician, business person, and lawyer who has held different senior ministerial posts in the government of France. She was Minister of Commerce, Minister of Agriculture and Fishing, and Minister of Economy, Finance, and Industry. She began her brilliant, brilliant legal career at Baker and McKenzie's Chicago office. She handled major antitrust and labor cases and became partner after six years and later was appointed head of the firm in Western Europe. She opened the European Law Center, an office of Baker and McKenzie in Brussels, exclusively dedicated to the practice of European Union law. The Financial Times ranked her the, the best finance minister in the Eurozone. Humanity and excellence are the pillars of her successful career. Y ahora es para mí un gran honor invitar a Su Majestad, el Rey y el Presidente de la World Jurist Association, don Javier Cremades, a subir al estrado para la entrega de las medallas de honor Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Now, I would like to ask Mrs. Jane Ginsburg, President of the Jury and the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medal of Honor, to come to the stage in order to present her an award of the World Jurist Association in recognition to her value collaboration and her extraordinary work organizing this outstanding event. Jane, the first award, it would be for you also. <laughs> It was a surprise for her. <laughs> Congratulations. Ahora agradecería que accediera al estrado la señora Maite Oronoz Rodríguez para proceder al acto de entrega de la medalla. Muchas gracias, Maite. Agradecería que accediera al estrado la señora Luz del Carmen Ibáñez Carranza para proceder al acto de entrega de la medalla. Muchas gracias. Agradecería que accediera al estrado la señora Rosario Silva de la Puerta para proceder al acto de entrega de la medalla. Gracias, Rosario. I would be grateful if Mrs. Gillian Twiggs would access to the podium to receive her medal. Thank you so much, dear Gillian. I would be grateful if Mrs. Young Ki Him would access to the podium to receive her medal.
Muchas gracias. I would be grateful if Mrs. Christine Lagarde would access to the podium to receive her medal. Cristín Lagarde nos dirigirá unas palabras. Thank you. Majesty, Presidents and Vice Presidents of Constitutional Courts and Higher Courts, Ministers and Ambassadors, Honorable Members of the Jury and awardees of the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medal of Honor, Monsieur le Président of the World Jurist Association, dear Javier Cremades, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. I would like to first of all acknowledge and celebrate the creation by the World Jurist Association of the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Medals. Not so much because we were just awarded the medals, but because it is a very effective way to promote the legacy of a giant on the shoulders of whom we all stand. Not only did she consistently and resiliently promote the equality of all before the law and the defense of the rule of law, but she was also a magnificent agent of change for good in society and in the world. The WJA is part of the contemporary history of the struggle for a world ruled by law, not by force, ever since its creation back in 1957 or 58, depending on what the records actually say. But it was certainly due to Charles Ryan, then president of the American Bar Association, and Earl Warren, chief justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, whom we had the pleasure to see on screen. Justice Biden Ginsburg touched our life in multiple and often very personal ways. She inspired, guided, advised many of us, women and men alike. And many more will continue to be inspired to join her cause and will follow suit. We learn every day from her legacy. When I joined the legal profession in 1980, the only then female partner and managing partner of Baker McKenzie Harris office told me at the time, look up to Justice Sandra Day O'Connor and work as hard as you can if you want to break those many glass ceilings that you will bump into. It is another justice that I was soon to admire, famous and notorious RBG, one who belongs to a generation of women without whom we would not be here, I would not be here asserting our rights and yet claiming our differences. Upon receiving the Peace and Liberty Award, Ruth Baden Ginsburg recalled, I quote, that imperfect human nature makes it necessary to advance in the defense of the principles, values, and guarantees that only the rule of law offers to citizens' development. As His Majesty King Felipe also received the World Peace and Liberty Award, and as history teaches us, I quote, without respect for the laws, there is neither coexistence nor democracy, but insecurity and arbitrariness. The rule of law is the roadmap, the ground upon which the most innovative constructions can be made sustainable. And this is how Europe was built. And it was Winston Churchill on July 14, 1946, in Metz, in the presence of Robert Schuman, who formulated the embryo of Europe, rooted and governed by the rule of law, to guarantee reconstruction and cooperation between equals, overcoming the wounds of two tragic fratricide conflagration triggered by the nationalism of the time. It was to give way to the rule of law at the service of citizens, at the service of what unites us, as defended by all those who have since promoted the most prosperous and peaceful stage for all 
of Europe and for all of its citizens. The women assembled before you that I am honored and humbled to represent span the world where the rule of law has played, will play an equally vital role that they have defended in their respective capacity from Pretoria to Peru, from Bombay to Puerto Rico, from Sydney to Seoul and beyond, and right here at the heart of Europe. But as we all know and have experienced, the rule of law is as fragile as it is precious. It is both strong and weak, as it is in a permanent evolution. COVID has accelerated and amplified so much of the good and the bad in our societies. The rule of law must resist and defeat corruption, exacerbated nationalism, abuse of law, and populism. So it is very fitting that from all corners of the world, we are united to celebrate and renew our vows to serve it, to protect it, to cherish it, not leaving any stone unturned any precedent unquestioned, never giving up, and forever walking in the footprints of Madam Justice Ruth Baden Ginsburg. Thank you.